Region Europe is the international program of the University of Turin, pursuing a comprehensive knowledge of the European model of regional integration and of the EU as a global actor. The involvement of 45 guest lecturers coming from all across the world's most prestigious universities and institutions allows us to bring fresh and critical perspectives on crucial issues concerning European integration and the role of the EU in world affairs with a forward-looking approach. We want to introduce you to how the EU actually works from its beating heart, visiting its institutions and interacting with its actors. From its first edition, each year Region Europe has given the opportunity to more than 150 students coming from all over the world to gather and exchange views and experiences. Professor Finizio, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you to participate in this uh, seminar. And thank you for inviting me, Professor Finizio. Uh, Asia and Europe is one of my uh, interests uh, because of the similarities and because we have ASEAN here also in Southeast Asia. So I am very pleased. Uh, some of my thought, of course, this is a uh, make forum so you are free to, to discuss and we can have a good discussion after this but uh, let me present some of the to plan. and i have to talk about perception from Southeast to you so uh, i have to acknowledge it as an indonesian will be biased for indonesia so uh we can discuss also further about that, yeah? Let me uh, share my uh, slides. See it now? My slides, okay. Of the ring European Union yeah, yeah. from Southeast Asia, perspective of Asian countries. But as I mentioned before, as an Indonesia, I, of course, I'm gonna be bias uh, for, uh, on the Indonesian side. But let me uh, go one by slides, uh, very quick, uh, I think about 14 or 13 slides, but let I will divide it into uh, six uh, uh, se section from introduction and then short, uh, uh, short overview of ASEAN-EU relations. And then I will concentrate on the three issues. There are so many perspectives perspective from ASEAN to EU, but we will not have time to do it, all of them tonight. Uh, on, sorry, it's in Jakarta, so. <laughs> but we'll concentrate on three issues. How ASEAN uh, perception on the EU regional integration and on EU as a no, Brexit, then conclusion, yeah? But we can, of course, discuss some of them. Uh, uh, just as uh, it's ASEAN and uh, EU are two different regional integration, not only in terms of uh, institutional design, goals, and also culture, uh, cooperative culture and values, but also these two region uh, is quite, uh, uh, quite far away from each other. If you see the, the map, uh, uh, you in ASEAN is almost uh, maybe uh, what one third one third of the of the globes. So we are quite far, and from from this map we can imagine we, do, we don't really have a uh, like close connection uh, as a daily day, daily basis. So uh, if we connect, if ASEAN and EU connect, uh, there must be something. Uh, to do special to 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 connect them. So uh, this is what I I would like to start with the, this map to give you some visual impression how far it is. But of course there are some connection. Let's see what is the con. Uh, but before we go to the connection, I just would like to introduce ASEAN. 
ASEAN is also a, a regional. I'm, I'm sure you have learned a lot about EU. Now about ASEAN, ASEAN is a regional institution established in 8 August 1967. And uh, it is look like EU. Yes, it's got inspiration from EU, very different from EU. And yes, ASEAN uh, uh, aims is mentioned in Bangkok Declaration. Uh, the first, uh, actually, the the second point, the point at, at, the, at the bottom is the the most important, which is regional stability. Regional stability, because there were so many sixties in the area in Southeast Asia, three level of conflict, uh, and the country Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines decided that we would like to make a stable uh, region. So this is uh, why it's come uh, now as an ASEAN with uh, ten member countries, and. The second purpose, the second important purpose is the dot number one, to accelerate the economic growth, social progress, and cultural development. But ASEAN, in the beginning, ASEAN is very much a political project. Political project, or you can call it peace project, just like EU, to stabilize the, the region. So this is ASEAN. And how ASEAN engage with external major powers? Uh, ASEAN engage with external major, regional powers, including EU, but also China, United States, Russia, India, uh, we, uh, they engage uh, because of historical relation. Southeast Asian country, all almost all ASEAN country was occupied by European countries. They were colonies of uh, European countries, XI. So they already have a historical relation with any particular major power even before ASEAN was established. And that will in influence their relation with those external major powers and ASEAN later on, because some of the countries may uh, some seem to pri prioritize their relation with those external major powers rather than with ASEAN. So this is one of the problem that we can see uh, later on. And uh, ASEAN countries also engage with major powers because this area is very important strategically. If you see the map, ASEAN countries are between two ocean, uh, Indian and Pacific Ocean, and between two uh, continents, Asian continent and Australia continent, Australian continent. And this is one of the busiest uh, trade, trading lines in the world. So you can imagine that there are a lot of major powers would like to occupy this area. There have been a lot of conflict in this area for many, many hundred years. And because and currently, uh, as you may already see, already understand that there is also a competition between China and United States in this area. Before it, it was also uh, uh, occupied by the uh, uh, Cold War, but now China and the United States are also have competition in this area. But ASEAN is always formed with principle, which is inspired by Indonesia, actually. And as far as possible, we would like to be non-alignment. We would like ASEAN. ASEAN have a principle, there should be no, there should be no domination of single country domination of single country, meaning that we will not allow, the ASEAN will not allow any big power to dominate. So ASEAN prefer to, to, to bring as many as big powers on their region, uh, then what then they create as a equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium. Yeah. And then lastly, because ASEAN is made of small and medium countries, they will, they are not as big as like a European country, rich and big countries, ASEAN countries, all are medium countries. So they realize that they need big powers, big country in order to grow and to develop and uh, to prosper. So that's why ASEAN have a lot of functional relation with other countries. And because of that, you can see uh, ASEAN 
uh, have a lot of uh, what you call uh, 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 dialogue partner. I will explain it later on when we explain about the first uh, perspective. I uh, so uh, then with that uh circumstances how uh, ASEAN countries perceive EU and how their their perception on EU uh uh has been shaped uh it will have to be considered three aspects historical legacy and this is a legacy of very much influence uh the way ASEAN perceive ASEAN country countries perceive EU because uh especially for those who has uh, who was Colon, uh, the colonies of EU, uh, they have uh, uh, either bad or good uh, 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 image of the EU. For example, Indonesia. Indonesia had a very bad uh, relation with the Dutch at the end of the colonization with the independent wars. So we have perceived EU will must be very differently from the Singapore, Malaysia, and Brunei that had full separation. So uh, and from the Philippines that had um, peaceful relation with the United States or um, um, even maybe a painful relation with the Spain. So from uh, and all from the Indochina Indo Indo countries that had a bloody war with the French at the end of the colonialization. So this historian shape uh, later relation with the EU and also their perception on, uh, on the EU. And the second is functional relation with the EU. Several countries has a very strong relation with EU like Singapore uh, and currently Thailand also. Uh, but uh, this relation, of course, will shape uh, their relation with with the EU and EU countries. And currently, Singapore is the the what do we call it um, shaper shaper country uh, that become the the coordinator of ASEAN with the EU. And so no no wonder that uh, Singapore is the more active and close uh, countries in ASEAN to the EU. So this real and of course percent of the Singapore toward EU and Indonesia toward EU is very much different. And the thirdly is ASEAN functional characters. What I mean ASEAN sorry ASEAN institutional characters. ASEAN is a very different uh, institutional arrangement. Had a very different institutional arrangement from EU. ASEAN institutional design is quite loose. Uh, it is it is not bind as binding as EU. Yeah. Uh, they have a uh, uh, communique, they have a uh, 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 chairman statesman at the end of their meetings, the, uh, the summit or the leaders meetings. But uh, how then uh, whether the countries comply or not to that communique or agreement uh, is then back to the country. And ASEAN didn't, doesn't have power to force any uh, agreement any, because any of member country could just quit and but ASEAN didn't want to the, the, uh, this can happen so we try to come with the lowest common denominator so everybody can be happy with this kind of arrangement and we, because of this ASEAN usually do not have ASEAN usually uh, doesn't have uh, a common position and because of different background with the external power and different perspective and remember ASEAN also have a lot of differences among ourselves so because of that on, in almost all the issue ASEAN countries uh, do not have common position have uh, 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 similar position but usually they don't have so there's also a perception of the EU from ASEAN country can be Okay, let me go to the second uh, uh, topic now about ASEAN EU relation. It's a very brief. Uh, actually, the relations start 10 years after ASEAN was established. Informal relations start in 1972, informal. But since 1977, 
uh, EU was a dialogue partner of ASEAN. So EU involved in some of uh, ASEAN meetings. And uh, it was a seal in 1980 uh, with the ASEAN EEC cooperation agreement. But soon after it was signed, uh, this agreement didn't work because of political uh, problems between ASEAN and EU. And one of the uh, in in the uh, difference in 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 treat uh, how countries behave, uh, meaning that a lot of concern, a lot of critics from European because rights and problem of democratization. So in Asian side, why you have to tell us what we need, we need to do? So because of this problem, nine. Uh, 1980s was one of the worst uh, period of the ASEAN EU relation. It was only uh, safe in 1996 when as when Singapore and and France uh, sponsor uh, what we call as Asia Europe meeting. It was not only ASEAN and EU, but it was ASEAN plus three Japan, China, and Korea, with EU 15 at that time. So it is another creation, but this is a bigger than ASEAN EU, but it, it helped stimulate ASEAN EU relation that 2007, after the financial crisis, uh, Asian financial crisis, and some ASEAN countries start to show their uh, economic development, uh, then they seal another uh, cooperation with, uh, with EU under the Nuremberg Declaration of ASEAN, sorry, ASEAN EU Enhanced Partnership. And it was continuing up to now. So this is one of the, uh, uh, this is a brief uh, uh, EU uh, relations so far. Uh, now let me go one by one to three uh, perception of ASEAN of the EU. One is on the EU regional integration. What ASEAN think about this? For ASEAN, EU regional integration is in inspiration, but not the future. Meaning that we learn, uh, the ASEAN watch and learn from EU, but doesn't mean that they would like to imitate, doesn't mean that they would like to duplicate what, uh, what EU uh, has done. Because ASEAN country realize they are very different from EU. Uh, ASEAN country is very different uh, from you not only in culture and uh, 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 institutional design, but also because of the circumstances. ASEAN countries among themselves have a differences, a lot of difference. The among ASEAN countries, the uh, a big gap of there are a big gap of uh, economic uh, condition. Uh, you can. Uh, advanced like Singapore, Brunei, with high level of GDP, and there are medium country like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, or uh, much uh, 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 poor country like uh, uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Laos. So this gap of economic development and situation will not allow uh, this model like in uh, in EU to be applied in ASEAN. It's going to be very difficult, not only in economy, but also in politics. In EU, you have a more similar uh, 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 economic. Uh, but ASEAN, we have anything from a uh, uh, democracy country like Indonesia and Philippines to uh, some Pseudo, -democ pseudo democracy like Thailand and Singapore to authoritarian country like Cambodia. Uh, uh, we can say to some extent Laos and also uh, one or military dominated country like Myanmar or po political party, uh, communist political party dominated country like Philippines, uh, sorry, like uh, Vietnam. So different kind of political ideology, ideologies and uh, political system exists in us. And how could we go uh, 
you know, very uh, similar model like you, it's going to be very different. That's why ASEAN went to the different path of regional integration institution uh, from the EU. Uh, in addition to that kind of differences across ASEAN member state, uh, there is another problem that ASEAN will never be uh, like you, uh, as deep as you and uh, the the kind of you, because ASEAN countries still cling very much on their sovereignty. They don't, they do not uh, want to lose any of the rights of the countries, and for them, sovereignty is 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 the first. Uh, so it's very difficult for them to uh, give up some of the sovereignty to 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 the uh, regional institution and um, maybe form a supranational uh, EU uh, European Council or European Parliament or uh, European Central Bank. It's still unimaginable for ASEAN countries. Uh, because they have cling very the sovereignty. We can talk more about this. And this is a uh, uh, setting of institution. ASEAN member countries uh, connect very closely with uh, their dialogue partner. We have 10 dialogue partners so far. EU is one of them. This is ASEAN dialogue partners. So ASEAN country uh, 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 made what we call uh, the institution now as a uh, uh, open regionalism, meaning that it is a regional institution, but the ASEAN country had very close close relation with external major powers. Those ten dialogue partners, uh, we have different uh, mechanism like ASEAN plus one. ASEAN mean there are ten ASEAN plus one. Uh, which individual uh, dialogue partner. So ASEAN plus China, ASEAN plus India, ASEAN plus United States, etc. until 10. And then there is also ASEAN plus three, ASEAN plus Japan, China, and Korea, which now become a very strong economic integration under RCEP, RCEP uh, Regional Economic Comprehensive uh, Cooperation Partnership. So, uh, this is a very different uh, institutional setting from the EU. Uh, this is what some of the uh, theories, uh, regionalism theories call uh, open regionalism or new regionalism. This is so different. Uh, this is uh, uh, what ASEAN uh, perceive on the EU regional integration. And the second is how uh, ASEAN countries uh, perceive of the EU normative powers. Uh, this is uh, quite interesting because, uh, as we understand, EU try to perceive itself or project uh, promoter of the human rights, uh, defender or champion the environment, and also what support of democracy. That's what we know about ASEAN normative power. But for ASEAN countries, uh, what ASEAN have been projected uh, uh, is uh, 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 can be perceived differently uh, because uh, and ASEAN countries argue about the generalist and particularist norms for like uh, human rights, democracy. Yes, we all love our nature, uh, have a, a, a respect human rights, and also want to have democracy. But uh, for ASEAN country, we should consider also the circumstances where we stand, the cultural, uh, political culture, and also tradition that has been there. It will be difficult to, to apply the same level of norms. Where. So ASEAN countries uh, would prefer more particularist rather, rather than generalist. And the second, because there was a notion of norms domination from uh, European country if they talk about that. This is what have been argued by ASEAN countries. People like Mahbubani or uh, uh, Mahathir talk about ASEAN values that they think that, okay, that's European version of human rights. Or this is ASEAN version of human rights. 
So there have been debate about, of course, some of them try to uh, protect uh, the political practices in their own countries. But uh, this is one of the area that we would, uh, how ASEAN countries perceive normative power of EU. And the second is about ASEAN, uh, how ASEAN see EU undertaken its normative around the world as a international act in their own countries. So about project, a projected image outside and what is the realities in EU, how far and have uh, EU countries apply what they promote outside in their, for example, like human rights. has been criticizing Myanmar and used to be also criticized Indonesia in 1980s that caused the problem of the ASEAN EU deadlock in 1980s. Uh, but how is the human rights issue in 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 EU in the EU? How far uh, they have protect the the human rights of their own citizen and of people in their own land, including the immigrant. So have seen these uh, 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 issues uh, closely, especially since the immigration crisis, in immigrant crisis in EU, the last several years, and how the EU country uh, uh, treat those kind of immigrants. Uh, of course, we saw some of the countries protect those immigrants and try to help and have a lot of measures and EU themselves have pressure. But in practice, there are several EU countries also uh, have been seen by ASEAN countries violate of human rights of those immigrants. And also about multiculturalism in EU, how far EU have uh, respect other culture outside their own culture. And uh, fortunately, last week or the week before, the, the in, 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 in French with, and Macron now have uh, also uh, been criticized in some ASEAN countries that have Muslim dominated Malaysia, uh, Brunei, Malaysia and Malaysia have been uh, very criticized, to, uh, uh, have criticized uh, President Macron because uh, the policy toward uh, Islam uh, community in French because of the last week event. So this is some of the, uh, the, 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 the perception that I saw uh, in the ASEAN countries toward uh, the EU. But of course, there was also some uh, admiration, like how EU helped some ASEAN countries protect their forests and improve the uh, livelihood of people around the forest, for example, in order to protect uh, the sustainable development in some particular country. So there have been a lot of ODA provided by uh, EU to ASEAN countries uh, related to the REDD, right, and also some other uh, instrument, the climate change. So this has been uh, respected by ASEAN countries, but of course, there are also some uh, what ASEAN can call as a hypocrite, uh, sometimes uh, given th this label, sometimes is given to the EU. Lastly, there is okay, this is the ASEAN values and principles that are very different from EU and especially the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. And one of them that has been criticized a lot by ASEAN countries is non interference. Non interference in the internal affairs of another. So, this this treaty is important because this is what make ASEAN survive so far. And one of the principles that make it uh, uh, important is because we should not intervene to uh, the internal affairs of our neighbors or other member states. And this is important. Otherwise, ASEAN will just break up since a long time ago. Uh, uh, I will talk about that uh, somewhere if you would like to ask. Is there any calibration? There's been some calibration of these values because some country uh, did uh, intervene, but it's in open public. 
There is no humiliating strategy in EU. Face saving strategy is very much important. So if we would like to criticize Myanmar, for example, uh, uh, ASEAN leaders usually or ASEAN diplomats usually did it within the closed door. They will not, uh, uh, this, this is not ASEAN way. So this is some of the value that's very much different and some of them very different from uh, the EU uh, uh, principle. And lastly, on the Brexit this picture, uh, I took it from one of the leading spots in, in the newspaper three days after the referendum in in UK. So no, sorry, uh, Abby, this, can you repeat? Uh, can, could you repeat? Is, could you repeat the letter? the last uh, the last sentence because uh, we have some we had some technical problems and we couldn't hear you uh, very well okay sorry uh this picture this picture was uh, i took this picture from one of the leading newspaper in indonesia three days after a uh, referendum undertaken in the uk and if you see as you see from the uh, from the picture, it's so uh, how ASEAN uh, perceive uh, uh, EU after the Brexit decision. Yeah, so uh, there was a kind of a shock, but also kind of questions. How can shock question and also kind of compare it with ASEAN? Okay, you could far with the uh, separation of one its members countries, and how could uh, ASEAN should be? So kind of reflection to, to ASEAN itself. And this is one of the point that they usually talk about that, about the Brexit. Uh, ASEAN countries, so Brexit is a indication of signs of limit of integration. There is, uh, uh, EU is like a, uh, what uh, testing or uh, social engineering, perhaps social and political engineering, regional level, but for uh, ASEAN and political engineering, it dangers, and this is where the limit of integration should be understood, and that's for ASEAN. Uh, uh, the institutional design of ASEAN loosely and not binding is one of the solution. And principle of this mechanism, uh, there is no uh, compliance uh, uh, or enforcing compliance that made any of the member countries feel inconvenient. We would like to be to make everyone, every member countries conformed in ASEAN, they, they they know that ASEAN may not be able to do as much as we would expect, but at least we are happy to be together, something like that. So this is what uh, uh, one of the institutional uh, aspect that we can see from uh, the uh, experience of Brexit seen from ASEAN. And the second is what ASEAN norms itself, the TAC, Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, the one that I just saw, that as for many years, ASEAN Treaty of uh, Treaty of Amity and Cooperation was criticized, especially from uh, EU uh, countries, EU scholars, uh, because of this principle of non-intervention. But because of those non-intervention principle, ASEAN country then could have a good relation among themselves. So this is what Acharya mentioned, if you uh, have ever read uh, the, his book, mentioned as a strength of ASEAN. So uh, this kind of principle may be seen as uh, weaknesses of ASEAN because it's uh, whole ASEAN uh, and make this institution couldn't go as far as it should be. But at the same time, actually, it is an asset because it keep ASEAN together. It is, yes, it may not be able to push ASEAN too much, but at the same time, it make ASEAN uh, 
countries feel convenient to be in that institution. There's no enforcing mechanism. So this is uh, uh, about the reflection on the ASEAN. So because of this principle, no intervention, we hope Brexit will not happen to any of the ASEAN countries because then ASEAN will uh, make this uh, uh, ASEAN way uh, applied. And this, uh, the second, uh, the another aspect of the Brexit is make also ASEAN think about the relevance of ASEAN and the value of ASEAN to their own countries. Whether they think that ASEAN is is relevant or not, if this ASEAN is still useful of not for their uh, national uh, interest. And so far, almost all the all the ASEAN countries think that ASEAN is still relevant and useful. Even though maybe some countries have the different priority on ASEAN from others, which is understandable. Uh, but all 10 ASEAN countries still maintain their uh, loyalty and their agreement that they would like to maintain ASEAN. And we would like to avoid the exit uh, Brexit in ASEAN uh, because of that. And we know that together uh, it's, uh, it's better. And maybe there is no better uh, time to be together to to maintain or to keep or to 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 keep our ASEAN together uh, than in this uh, pandemic era. So even in this pandemic era, COVID nineteen, ASEAN countries think it is time uh, when we need uh, the ASEAN most, and also when the big countries. Uh, try to enforce their unilateral uh, policies. So uh, small and medium countries like ASEAN have no way to, to, to go together. So this is uh, uh, one of the lessons that ASEAN countries learn from the Brexit. So with this, I would like to conclude uh, I, uh, how ASEAN EU has gone uh, in their uh, uh, history, uh, they are different, yes, but there are also some similarities in terms of the purpose that ASEAN and EU are both political project and peace project, but in terms of culture, circumstances, institution, they are so different. And in perceive EU, how ASEAN perceive uh, the EU, uh, it's very much shaped by uh, the historical legacy and also their functional relation with EU and, of course, the ASEAN institutional character. Lastly, I would like to mention that when ASEAN countries uh, perceive EU, when they have perspective, they have their perspective on the EU, at the same time, actually, they reflect to themselves. At the same time, they reflect and ask to themselves about their own regional institution. So there is always a mirroring, uh, comparing, and uh, from EU experience and how can we do it in So this is what uh, ASEAN usually do uh, in relation with uh, uh, their perspective uh, of the EU. With this, I would like to close and would like very much welcome your question. Thank you very much. I'll close this session. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so thank you very much, Avi, for for your um, wonderful presentation, a wonderful speech. Yeah. And now, um, sharing. yeah. So now um, the floor is open to to comments and questions uh, from students. Um, the first one comes from from. Uh, uh, so uh, from Eleonora, mm? from Eleonora. So um, uh, she uh, she asks uh, to go back uh, the concept uh, of open regionalism and to explain it uh, uh, again, if you can. Okay, open regionalism. It is not my concept. It is a concept uh, provided by. Uh, on regionalism like Higgins and 
there also some other that but what i always mean uh, remember me this principle also always remind me to uh, chat Higet. it is about open region me meaning that there is a regional institution there is a regional integration but at the same time it is not rigid uh, not rigid meaning that like ASEAN uh, not rigid because at the same time we also uh, had a close relation with external countries and some countries even had this close relation much closer than their relation with ASEAN countries so the ASEAN country the, the, so the region uh, doesn't form like a fort like a, like a in not exclusive but they are more inclusive they they welcome national power to participate actively in the regionalism in the regional project and even uh, have a special mechanism this is what asean have with the asean plus one asean plus one mechanism like asean with china asean with eu asean with United States, ASEAN with Australia, ASEAN with India, with 10, each of with 10 member. Uh, 10. So, that's a special arrangement that even uh, make, a, like, for example, trade relation with China is very close and ASEAN have CAFTA, China ASEAN Free Trade Agreement. Let's make, uh, why because ASEAN countries are small, as I mentioned, because they need external powers, uh, external countries to help the development. Otherwise, ASEAN just cannot just uh, work. So, because of this, ASEAN cannot be exclusive. ASEAN has to open to other uh, uh, external power. And this is what we have with the mechanism ASEAN plus one. Uh, with the uh, uh, dialogue partner and also plus three with Japan, China, and Korea. That's what we call it open regionalism because it's, it's a regionalism uh, project, regional integration project, but at the same, there are also extra regional countries could participate in this regional project, regionalization project. So this is open regionalism. Okay, so thank you very I much. Uh, and now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would, I would pose a question, if I may. That is, uh, that is, yes. uh, and it is the following. Uh, until uh, recent times, uh, uh, the European Union was uh, used to treat uh, to treat ASEAN as a normal recipient. No? That is, we should um, learn from uh, uh, the European Union values uh, and. Uh, and comply with the EU promoted norms, uh, and uh, even in terms of regionally, uh, in regional integration. Um, so, um, and 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 didn't and wasn't used to um, to consider ASEAN as uh, an actor to cooperate with uh, on an equal footing. Mm. Um, so, most recent uh, EU documents. Uh, uh, talked uh, talk about uh, uh, mutual learning. Mutual learning. It is the idea that you know uh, that um, the European Union and ASEAN should learn from each other and cooperate on an equal footing. Now, ASEAN has always uh, uh, accepted to some, to some extent the idea to that that it can learn from the something from the European Union ex, um, experience. Now the question is whether the European Union uh, can accept the idea to learn from ASEAN. So in your opinion, so in your in your opinion, <clears throat> what can the European Union uh, learn from the ASEAN integration experience? Thank you for that question, uh, uh, Professor Finizio. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Uh, as you has treated ASEAN as a norms recipient rather than an equal partner, meaning that you uh, tell if 
the norms, uh, EU norms is a general norms and ASEAN has to follow it. And this is actually what makes ASEAN uh, very trouble sums and uh, death in 1980s. Just one year after the signing of ASEAN, uh, ASEAN EEC cooperative agreement in 1980, it was deadlocked because of this issue, this problem. Uh, and why? Because ASEAN country didn't want to dictate it, didn't want to dictate it by ASEAN uh, by European country. They realized they are small country, they are not rich, they are, their competitive rate is low. But politically, they, they think they as an as an country thing they are very strong because they are together and they, they didn't want to accept that kind of uh, uh, norms uh, enforcement by the EU. So this is why uh, the problem the trouble uh, the problem is uh, problematic. But as international relations scholars, we learn about power. We learn about balance of power. And in 2018, ASEAN was nothing. ASEAN was, uh, compared to EU, ASEAN was a very small uh, 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 union of several small countries, we could say. But after the end of the Cold War, and especially after, uh, 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 in the last 20 years, we have seen that ASEAN, country, ASEAN countries have grown uh, quite strongly. And Especially after the ASEAN, ASEAN financial crisis, uh, those countries in Southeast Asia developed much stronger than before. And not only that, they have special relation with China. And if you, as you, as an international relations scholar, we understand that how China has changed the world. Not only China has changed the world, but also it's changed also the of other countries, including EU and including ASEAN. And now ASEAN countries, not only because their position, previous position, strategic position, location, and so, but also their relation with China is now one of the, the one of their strength. Well, uh, ASEAN country has been, as you mentioned in the opening of the class, now any big power would like to have a good relation with ASEAN. Why you think? Everyone would like to have good relation with ASEAN. One of the one of the answers is very close to China. ASEAN is just next to China, and ASEAN uh, uh, in bed or in as a bad pack of uh, negative positive impact of this relation make ASEAN what it is now. So uh, because of with China. Uh, ASEAN countries have developed quite strongly also the last two decades. And this is where now a lot of big powers, including EU, would like to invest. Because this is one of the uh, uh, what you call, uh, fastest growing countries, uh, growing areas uh, in the world. So all uh, big powers now would like to invest, not on but they also would like to, to trade because 600 million population of ASEAN is quite strong and they will continue to be strong in the uh, developing market. And as you understand, you are made of trade, trading nations. So trading is important from you. And because of shifting of the world, relation with United States is not as good as before, where you would like to trade China, ASEAN countries, China have 1.3 million and ASEAN has population and ASEAN has 600 million population. This is where now you countries would like to go. So there is a power, changing power relation behind this, behind uh, ASEAN EU relation. And with kind, this kind of circumstances, I think it is just normal now. Now uh, ASEAN uh, or EU have to consider another way to treat ASEAN. So when you think about uh, when EU came with a solution to have a mutual uh, relation with ASEAN, a, a, a more balanced relation, and there should be mutual learning from each other, this is understandable because the political uh, 
uh, circumstances is now very different. So I think uh, the relation ASEAN and EU have also been changed because of this. So and now, uh, what you could learn from ASEAN? I think there are several one, and but one I think is important, especially because of the rest, the Brexit. It is important not to make the institution so strict or so 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 rigid. ASEAN countries, our ASEAN has been criticized because of its loose characters. But because of its loose character, it survived with so many different characters among member states. How could us with one very rigid goal? It's impossible. As I mentioned, politically, we are each other in ASEAN countries. Economically, we, are, we have very different level of economic development. Culturally, you name it. We are, we can talk, we are, Agree to talk in English, the the language that not originally from ASEAN, from other country. But if Indonesia imposes, we have to speak Indonesian language as an ASEAN country. There will be a guarantee a breakup in ASEAN. So we agree to use English. So and but other from that, we are so different. So with this kind of character, how could you force ASEAN to be so rigid in one goal or whatever? It's impossible. And this is maybe one thing that you could learn that maybe there should there should be some flexibility institution. Yes, there will always a cost of that. Maybe you will not as fastest growing as the, the member state. But this is important to make sustainable institution. And this is what ASEAN has done with uh, this kind of flexibility. So informality and flexibility in ASEAN is very important. And informality especially because ASEAN way is very different. Maybe this is a Asia value, I would like to say. Treat other countries like friends, friend, I mean, friendship, friend, yeah. Not as a colleague, but as a friend, as a family, perhaps, as a family. So we may not need agreement but we could trade because there is trust and trust only on a material base but on also in a friendship and this is maybe for some for some EU country is difficult because maybe you are so uh, because of the tradition maybe very logic very very good in arrangement of institution everything must be in a contracts with a principle and a law of en uh, en law enforcement is good and everything is uh, in 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 place, which uh, in us personality and sometimes uh, what's you call um, in uh, sport have been taken because of the circumstances. So, uh, and this is what the uh, informality usually work in ASEAN. Uh, personal approach, which is in EU, is not really recognizable because personal approach can create uh, uh, nepotism or corruption, etc. That's another negative of this. But to some extent, uh, personal relation and also malady also make things could move uh, more smoothly. And quickly, uh, I think, uh, shortcut a lot of bureaucracy. So there is a positive and negative aspect cause of this kind of arrangement. But this can we, though maybe yeah. some of them can be useful for EU, but some others. But another one is about multiculturalism. I don't know whether you have learned to 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 live with different culture you has lived with you culture uh european uh culture but have uh, you to live with different culture from different country or continent like the one brought by the immigrants in southeast asia because of their tradition have a lot of influence a lot of cultural other cultural influence to southeast asia so we used to with differences, and uh, this area has been receptive to a lot of 
culture and influence since thousand years ago. So uh, we are used to with differences and we deal with that. So yeah. this, um, sometimes, sometimes success, of course. So yeah. So, yeah. So thank you very much. So uh, now I wanted to to leave the, the floor to to students whose whose um, questions are, are more important than mine. But uh, I wanted to pose you a very Eurocentric objection to to, to what you are saying. You know? that is that is um, you said that we that that Europe should learn. Um, you know, um, flexibility and informality, you know? But as far as I know, one of the, 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 the biggest problem ASEAN had experienced in the past, and maybe also today, is the lack of compliance uh, with, the common, uh, with the common obligations uh, and so on. So isn't this due to this flexibility, intergovernmentalism, and so on and so forth. How would you solve this problem without, you know, formal institutions, without a kind of supranationalism and so on? So this is very Eurocentric objection. So I am perfectly aware of this, but just to discuss it. You want me to answer to now or? Okay. Uh, I no, yeah, yeah, but, yes, yes, or, or, but, but briefly, yeah, so that we can leave the floor to okay. students. Okay, right. Uh, different countries or different areas have their own way of uh, uh, cooperation. And ASEAN and EU has, have different cooperative cultures. So because of these differences, that's why they deal with institution differently. For you, maybe the one that you just mentioned is work. For ASEAN, it will work because ASEAN country will object uh, a binding mechanism because their sovereignty is the first. So if this to, uh, to be rigid, more institutionalized, you can imagine ASEAN has could have break up since long broken up since long time ago. Informality uh, is a way that ASEAN could do. How the institution? Well, we go slowly. We have to focus if we are not ready. So ASEAN move forward when everyone convenient. Maybe at all, which okay because this is how the track. What is important is much more is trust first, and then we can follow up with institution. And maybe the trust afterward. For us, and trust is important. And uh... hmm. Hmm. so, Professor Fitriani. Did... Okay, so you just reappeared, but we 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 couldn't hear you for uh, for uh, for some time. Can you hear? Her? Can you hear oh, sorry. me? Sorry. Uh, yes, I could hear you clearly. I could hear you clearly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, just just uh, could you repeat? Could could you repeat uh, the the last sentence or so? Okay, the last sentence I talk about trust. In ASEAN, mm -hmm. uh, the institution, uh, when you ask, how could you bring the institution work? ASEAN, we develop the institution in, at the pace convenient for everyone. We will not rush country when they are not ready. I think it's also in EU that you have also developed the uh, mechanism of uh, X minus, ASEAN minus X. In our kind of mechanism, ASEAN minus if Yeah, one this is the, the, the opting ready, out, the yes. so-called opting out. Yes. Yes. Uh, in ASEAN, we call it uh, minus X mechanism. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. uh, any country can can join when they are ready. And most of ASEAN countries are not ready if we have to force them and put a very high level of compliance. So how do we do? We can force other country, and they are all sovereign country. Sovereign. So in a peace convenient for everyone. And with that, we keep ASEAN together. Maybe it's not as developed as EU, not as quick as you, but for ASEAN country, political uh, understanding, political relation, it's much more important, perhaps rather than material or economic relation at the moment. Because as I mentioned, back to Bangkok Declaration 1967, ASEAN was and still political institution. It's only the last 17 years we choose to make ASEAN economic community or other, other. But at the beginning, it was to maintain stability, meaning that no war between ASEAN countries. This is the lowest common denominator that we keep. In. And if possible, ASEAN will move forward. But if not, we keep in that uh, lowest common de denominator and it is better rather than break up mm -hmm. okay so thank you very much there is a question from uh, elisa elisa can you turn your on your microphone and your camera possibly yes good evening uh, i just wanted uh, to ask if you could repeat uh messy um asian opinion on brexit because i lost the the second part uh, statement sorry i also lost this. <laughs> yeah. uh, some question in your question can can you some sentence in your question can you repeat your question please elisa uh, first, uh, just uh, the main opinion of asian countries on brexit because i lost the connection and so i couldn't understand okay brexit uh, yes, ASEAN country watch Brexit very closely. And the first thing that we think when it happens is uh, we think about the limit of integration. The limit of integration uh, should be understood. Where should we stop by uh, not to force? And actually, my discussion with Professor Finizio reflected for ASEAN country being flexible and took on the lowest com common denominator is the safest one to keep everyone intact to keep the institution intact and to keep everyone inside rather than break up so when we saw break uh, brexit we saw this is because of the problem of institution in eu which is too rigid and too much enforced to, to the states to member state so uh they don't feel convenient being inside anymore. And worse, maybe there is some domestic politics happen in EU that could use it. In ASEAN, no uh, political uh, leaders will took, uh, uh, will took benefit from selling ASEAN membership issues to their constitution not like in what we saw in the uh, constituent in 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 uk so because of that then we think brexit is the problem of institution uh you went too far and too quick when not all the members convenient feel convenient and not all of them are ready to do that that's what we think about. Second, we think also uh, if it's happened to ASEAN, we have we call Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. In this Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, uh, the principle has been criticized a lot, which is non intervention, not in non interference to any of other country domestic issues, which in EU is not happen 
but for ASEAN, this is the key to maintain peaceful relation with other member states. You can imagine if Indonesia criticizes Thailand or criticizes Myanmar, or criticizes Malaysia with what happened in their country with their democracy, we can imagine ASEAN will be like EU. We lost country, member country one by one. But ASEAN countries didn't do that because they respect other countries, uh, non intervention, and because we have similar problem domestically. Yeah, Indonesia also have some problem domestically, and Indonesia didn't want other ASEAN member state to criticize Indonesia too. So this is the way we uh, maintain face saving strategy to each other, and it works. So for us, other external people, external uh, uh, people, maybe we'll see ASEAN Treaty of Amity, ASEAN Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, especially the principle of non-interference is a problematic. But for ASEAN, this is a point. This is what help we keep, what help us together. Yeah, so Brexit will now. So at the same time, when we watch Brexit, we also try to reflect it to our ourselves, and we found that our principle is okay and it's become asset, even though it has been criticized. So that's what I can answer, Elisa. Um, hopefully, you, you can. Understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't hear yes, you. Yes, sorry. So Marco, Marco is asking. Uh, so I'm reading. I'm reading his question. Is as I am trying to create a sense of common identity, like Europe is doing with different programs, like Erasmus, uh, or it does prefer to ignore this type of uh, community aspect? <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. That's a very good question. Uh, actually, as I mentioned before, ASEAN always watch what happened at e in EU. And when the failure of the constitutional treaty took place many years ago and EU switched the strategy to strengthen their identity, it also happened with ASEAN. Since uh, 2000, 2013, Mm, let me remember. Uh, I think since 2013, yes, 2013, ASEAN has been very actively to push more uh, ASEAN community feeling, sense of belonging, sense of ASEAN-ness among ASEAN countries. But of course, this is difficult because ASEAN, since it was inception in 1967, was elite project. It was pushed from the top down just like EU. But since the last decades, ASEAN tried to switch the strategy to, 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 to pull more uh, supporters to ASEAN by uh, become, becoming a more uh, people-oriented institution. What we call it people. And ASEAN already put a lot of ASEAN documents now that they would like to be ASEAN leaders in a communique and many documents that they try to make ASEAN now become a people-oriented institution. That's uh, the strategy since the last decade. But in addition to that strategy, ASEAN also have tried to create some uh, symbolic, uh, symbolic um, means of uh, uh, common identity, like uh, ASEAN flag, and also ASEAN anthem, and also now we have ASEAN day every August. With, through this identity symbol, ASEAN leaders also would like to enhance the feeling of ASEAN among the people. Of course, it is difficult in this process. I think it will take many, uh, at least one generation to make uh, really uh, this kind of feeling. Lastly, ASEAN also have ASEAN scholarship. So several ASEAN countries 
have this uh, ASEAN scholarship. Uh, so like Indonesian student will go to Singapore or to Malaysia under this scholarship. So just like I think like Erasmus Mundus project. And scholars like me who study ASEAN and we have connection, as I mentioned before, uh, maybe Felicio when uh, uh, intro introduced me, mentioned about I was initial country coordinator for a second track. This is non-state actor, so about scholar, scholar to scholar relation. And there was also this second track in addition to the first track, which is government. Second track is people like us, scholars. And the third track is uh, usually NGO students. And so there was also movement around the second track and the third track to move more frequently. So ASEAN uh, Secretariat tried to push several agenda for activities where ASEAN second track and the third track can uh, interact more actively in any of the issues. So I think this is another strategy by ASEAN leaders to make ASEAN-ness uh, growing among ASEAN people. Like you, we also try to identity. Okay, so there is a question from Francesca. Which kinds of circumstances did you refer to when talking about particularist versus generalist? Okay, uh, sorry, who is the, the question came from? Uh, from Francesca. Francesca, Francesca thank you for the question. Uh, we talk about about norms, for example, human rights or democracy. Those are most the EU, in the EU or external, and try to be uh, applied in the operated in the other country, including ASEAN. And for uh, those uh, those those leaders, there was always differences. Because different level of economic, different political, culture, different uh, 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 way of life. So, for example, human rights. People like uh, Mahmoudi, uh, uh, one of the thinkers from uh, from the Singapore, string that. Human rights is nothing if you don't eat. So for them, it's important to to give uh, to to secure the food and secure the uh, livelihood, uh, decent livelihood of your people before you give them other rights. So for 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 the the basic uh, human rights is food and. Uh, 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 Prosperity. So that's why in Singapore you see this country didn't really give uh, political rights to the to the, the the citizen, but they maintain good economic level. So everyone, the citizen, feel happy. They prosperous. Uh, they have a good, even though they don't have political party. So for these uh, leaders, uh, this is what they call particularists. Human rights is where those people could live with a uh, decent life. And this is what Singapore in of human rights. And Indonesia, of course, we have different ones. For us, human rights is when we respect other people, including people. Uh, so your rights should not violate other people. Because uh, in Indonesia, between individual rights and group or family rights is very important. And because of the culture in Indonesia, that family is number one, or a group is number one, or clan is number one, sometimes it is above the individual. So this is different practice of human rights too. You have your rights, but first you have to respect the family rights or the clan rights so so this is what i mean as a particular in 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 the practice of the norms of human rights and for you maybe no we want everyone just like this 
this is the norms for us and no way this is your norm not our norms that's <laughs> my i hope this answer francisca yeah francisca. so yeah, there is a there, there is a question from zlata from latvia zlata can you switch on your mic yes can you hear me yes Yes. Good afternoon and good, good evening uh, to everybody. Um, my question was referred to, to the topic of Brexit, and I was wondering if there are any country inside of Asia that is inclined to, to the direction of Brexit, and if there is such a country, what are the main criticisms that are um, that we can that can be seen in these countries towards ASEAN? Thank you uh, for your question. Uh, we have i haven't been in any research to do this seriously but judging from the conversation with click maybe two countries that would like to or maybe i could say three is indonesia singapore or myanmar indonesia is the, when we hear about brexit and we just make a joke about in the six indonesia with also in those six uh, meaning the initial out from Brexit, because have you uh, heard about some uh, uh, discussion among Indonesian scholars whether we should confine our foreign policy within the ASEAN or we go beyond ASEAN? So this is there, there is a debate among Indonesian foreign policy scholars and makers to what extent our foreign policy should be linked with ASEAN. Or should we just go beyond ASEAN if we think ASEAN is not big enough for Indonesia? So this is one of a debate in Indonesia, whether ASEAN is, and especially also whether Indonesia could get benefit from ASEAN. Indonesia relies with 40%, Indonesian population is 40% of ASEAN. So we realize that we are big market for other countries and we can be victimized because of this, because of this insecurity feeling of a lot of Indonesian population, citizen. So uh, some of ASEAN country, uh, Indonesian think that we should quit ASEAN if we are only become the victim of free trade area of ASEAN. So this is one of the, but I'm sure will it never happen because Indonesia is, the founder, one of the founding states of ASEAN. And ASEAN in uh, Indonesia will not be able to 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 live uh, uh, to to go out of ASEAN. Uh, as a school of ASEAN uh, and our Indonesian foreign policy, I can be very sure of that. And the second of is Singapore. Why do you think Singapore would like to leave ASEAN? Because ASEAN is too slow for Singapore. Singapore wanna move very quickly because it's very competitive economically and think itself as a member of elite groups in the world so they think that they would be better served their interests will be better served outside us uh, if they leave ASEAN because maybe they don't have patient in enough patient to be ASEAN countries but I don't think this will also happen because Singapore economy is very much depend on the regional economy. Singapore could be prosperous like that because it's become the hub of the country surrounding. So it's get a lot of benefit, benefit by being in ASEAN. The biggest investment in ASEAN is from EU. And where it goes? It goes to Singapore. Most of ASEAN, uh, most of investment from China, from EU, you name it, from other external power, went to ASEAN through Singapore. So from Singapore, and then they, they then spread to other ASEAN countries. And this is where Singapore become prosperous because of its uh, economic function in ASEAN. Without ASEAN, Singapore will be problematic economically. So that's why I said, even though Singapore maybe become frustration with ASEAN slow uh, economic development, but it this country depends on ASEAN also economically. And Myanmar, 
Why I said that Myanmar has uh, maybe tendency to uh, to do what Brexit has done? Maybe because there are so many pressure on Myanmar. There are so many pressure on Myanmar, and uh, they don't think it is worth it to be in ASEAN because they get also pressure. Why as this is why ASEAN country didn't want to force Myanmar, even though ASEAN country was criticized by EU and also by United States and other Western country because ASEAN didn't criticize Myanmar. ASEAN didn't have to criticize Myanmar openly, but we did in a closed door. We did in closed door, but didn't we didn't want to humiliate <laughs> Myanmar leaders. Yeah. But uh, so Myanmar will not, I think, will not leave ASEAN also because Myanmar understand ASEAN approach is better with ASEAN rather than be, being alone. And you can imagine next door of Myanmar is India to the west and to the north is China. And if Myanmar alone, it will have to face those two countries by itself. It's better to cling together to other small fellows like ASEAN countries than to have to face India and Myanmar alone. Because it's very problematic also with, with Myanmar. So this is my question to and my answer to that. I hope it's answer your question. Thank you. Okay. Okay, okay. So Gaetano, is your it's your turn. Please jump in. Good evening, Professor. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you for your contribution today. Um, I would last. I would like to ask you if uh, in the um, in the history of uh, ASEAN, uh, it's ever happened uh, a big uh, break of principle of the treaty of amity and cooperation from one member country of uh, ASEAN, and uh, if so, how um, ASEAN reacted to this? And also, I would like to ask uh, if uh, ASEAN has ever adopted uh, uh, sanctional tool. Uh, economic sanctional tool or uh, uh, other type of uh, sanctions uh, to a country inside ASEAN or outside ASEAN. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your question, uh, Gaetano, about uh, the first uh, any break uh, violation of Treaty of uh, One of the yes. principles of the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation is use of force and peaceful uh, peaceful uh, resolution to or the principle. And about 12 years ago, 2008, 2008 there was a uh, tension between Cambodia and, and Thailand because of uh, their border. There was a very important and historic uh, 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 what you, uh, temple in, in their border. And they compete for, those, for that temple. So there was a, uh, a, a dispute on the, the ownership of the temple. The temple called Fria, Fiera Fiera. Rea VR. I also have a problem in, in spelling it and pronounce it. Prea VR has been uh, 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 disputed between Thailand and uh, uh, Cambodia, and there was a open fire in in the year 2010, and there was a breach of the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation especially on the uh, principle of no use of force. And what happened? And at the time, Indonesia Minister of Foreign Affairs, Marti Natal Gawa, was very active. He was kind of ASEAN man. Uh, also, in Indonesian Minister of Foreign Affairs, he was known as ASEAN man. So he was, uh, and at the time, Indonesia was the chairman of ASEAN. So Indonesia was the chairman of ASEAN, and there was an open fire, and if one, I think, it is that one, one or two army was uh, shot. Now, because of that, there was a crisis in this area, and Marty 
took a kind of a diplomatic step to try to 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 negotiate with both parties with Thailand and with Cambodia for a solution and we tried to solve this issue within ASEAN we didn't want to bring this issue to the council UN security council because the principle what happened in ASEAN should be handled by ASEAN this is what the principle at that time during the Marti era this is now different with the Myanmar refugee Myanmar refugees problem is now already in the security council but at the time Indonesia president Yudhoyono also had that principle what happened in ASEAN should be uh, solved in ASEAN not to bring it to the world so this is what Indonesia uh, Indonesia and other country try of course Indonesia try to engage other big country like Myanmar like uh, Malaysia and Philippines to help uh, persuade Thailand and Cambodia to come down and to went to the uh, 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 peaceful diplomatic uh, uh, resolution, and the two countries finally agree to bring those issues to Supreme uh, International Court of Justice. Yes, International Court of Justice. So, in ASEAN, the pre the problem in ASEAN, we don't really have the fixed mechanism of. Uh, 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 conflict resolution mechanism. Actually, there was some of the principle in the ASEAN Charter about the conflict uh, resolution mechanism, but you, but there is a precondition for that, which is the disputing country must agree on that uh, mechanism. And at the time, uh, Cambodia was agree, but Thailand didn't. So the principle of the mechanism, uh, the, the mechanism couldn't be applied at the time. So then ASEAN country tried to mitigate the damage and make those two countries to talk peacefully. If they couldn't solve the border dispute, then they have to bring it to the International Court of Justice, but not to have a, a, a conflict in the border. That's the principle of ASEAN. You have to solve this uh, peacefully. And if ASEAN couldn't help, so we come to the International Court of Justice. We, we, we suggest them to solve this in the International Court of Justice, the other body outside ASEAN. But within ASEAN, we persuade the, the two countries to meet again. So mechanism of uh, fel other fellow countries to help mitigate the, the relation. And you saw this of the ASEAN will take a lead to, 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 to the initiative. At that time, it was Indonesia. This one of the example I could recall. And any sanction from ASEAN, ASEAN never gave sanction. Because ASEAN said, why should we give sanction? Because ASEAN do not have political legitimacy to give sanction. It is There is no sanction in ASEAN. We agree something, but if somebody or any country think they would like to withdraw from their agreement, no other country would like, uh, no other country could sanction it, but they will keep negotiate, will keep lobby. For example, there was an agreement on ASEAN open sky policy in ASEAN several years ago. It was sponsored by Singapore, which is sustainable. We, we understand as understandable because Singapore was such a tiny country so their uh, uh, air uh, is not big enough for the, the maneuver of their uh, uh, flights international flight and Singapore Changi Airport is one of the hub in maybe the biggest hub in Southeast Asia so they proposed for open sky policy Indonesia was quite reluctant at that time but for the spirit of ASEAN community, we agree. But we didn't do it. See, Indonesia agree for the uh, agreement, but when uh, we uh, apply it in the country, for example, make a preparation, etc., we didn't do it. And Singapore couldn't force Indonesia, but they keep negotiate with Indonesia. 
they keep force Indonesia to do it. No, but maybe kind of uh, more uh, more pressure for Indonesia to do. And in also in ASEAN, we have this uh, reciprocal uh, principle. So they use this reciprocal. If Indonesia didn't want to do this, so we didn't want to do this too. So, so this is what happened. It's kind of negotiation uh, among the countries to do that. So no, no sanction. No, also no sanction to Myanmar. We didn't sanction Myanmar for what happened in Myanmar. But Indonesia and other countries try to persuade Myanmar that they have to listen to international community concern. And this persuasion didn't take place in open public. But it plays with a close door. So this is the this is the sanction, but we try to persuade and give confidence to two countries to, if we would like to change their behavior, uh, confidence through uh, examples. For example, Indonesia went through a very difficult transition of democracy. And only within one decade, we managed to change the authoritarian government of Suharto to democratic government, what we have now. And we want also spread this spirit to other ASEAN country, but we didn't force them to do that. We create what we call Bali Democratic Forum. Bali Democratic Forum, and in this Bali Democratic Forum, we share Indonesia experience with other country and try to convince them that they could also they could also transform their political system to be democracy and so they could learn from indonesia but we don't force them to to imitate us no we just show we could do this and this is our way to do it so maybe we have to adjust some of them. and this is what happened now with indonesia and myanmar indonesia tried to convince myanmar too that it is possible to change. And Myanmar military has a very close relation with Indonesia military since long time ago. And even they learn from Indonesia military. And now when we in, encourage them to also do democratization process, they said, yes, we would like to follow you, but we will not be as quick as you. This is what their leader said. We would like to, but they still have lot of fear, maybe there are a lot of complications in that too. So the, and there is no uh, what uh, uh, focal leaders, Aung San Suu Kyi, but this this have a good support. It doesn't really have a, a strong uh, uh, what engagement with with people. So it's quite difficult for democratization process to, to 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 take place in Myanmar. In Indonesia, we had a lot of people like that soon after uh, financial crisis. I hope I answer your question. Yeah, you were very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. OK, Thank there you. is a question from, so we have uh, six minutes. Eh? So uh, there is a question from Enrico. Uh, but, um, which I'm reading now. So, Professor, you said that Brexit is the proof of why the EU is not effective. However, don't you believe that Brexit is the result of a certain political propaganda aimed at rather than the result of a lack of cohesion? It's a matter of propaganda, according to Enrico. Yes, I uh, yes, it could be propaganda, but this propaganda will not happen if there is no thing to be propagand to be to to be propagandic. Yeah, uh, I mean uh, this uh, at the time, uh, Cameron, yeah, David Cameron had this uh, prop uh, do this, uh, or maybe uh, the what the club uh, Brexit groups Brexit groups uh, prop. I do a lot of propaganda for, for this, yes, I agree with that. But study about relation, they have been a lot of state relations between UK and EU since it first 
membership. You when UK came to as a in 1973, just a year already trial for referendum, but it was and there was also European I forgot what is the the the, the concept European the very critical criticize uh crit, crit, very critical opinion of you in uk it has been like that since long time ago it's not now it's not only since since the propaganda done by uh, david cameron and other, or others or uh, brexit groups but since the beginning uh british has been so uh, critical and which is as understandable because mentally they don't think they are e European because of the uh, separation of the uh, them from the continent. So yes, it can be a propaganda, but there is also some underlying mentally different mentality between British, British and the European on on the issue of EU. So and of course. Uh, Institutional setting is another problem. Uh, we believe that maybe pressure has to be too big and that it can be used as a issue of propaganda. That's my question. Oh, sorry. So there is uh, the last one, the last one from uh, Ludovica, maybe. Yes, it's about literature. That is, uh, can you suggest? Uh, two books uh, about uh, ASEAN in order to learn more about ASEAN. I would start with the, the recent book, book published uh, very recently, uh, including a chapter of you. So, please. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Professor Finizio. Yes, there was uh, several articles on us uh, books on ASEAN. I think one of the one of the uh, usually uh, used is uh, by former uh, Secretary General of ASEAN. Forget now the name. The Philippines uh, guy, former uh, former Secretary General of ASEAN, the Filipino. I forgot now the name. He wrote a very on inside of ASEAN because he was a lot of the problems and insight with. I could say the title to uh, Professor Finizio later on about the book, but I also wrote several uh, articles on ASEAN EU, and uh, one of them is in the book of Professor Mario Tello several years ago. Uh, this book, I, I can it uh, here. If you see, yes, because most of, them, most of them are supposed to know it very well. Yeah, because so because in this, yes. in this yeah, book, sorry, I wrote sorry. a chapter. I wrote a chapter on the differences of the cooperative culture between ASEAN and EU. So I contrast them. In this chapter, so I wrote, and there was also two more uh, uh, chapters in this book written by Professor uh, Rulan from Germany, and another one by my colleague from Singapore, Sarah Theo, on the ASEAN. So there's also two, uh, three, so three book chapters from this book could be used for your reference. And if you my bibliography. In that book chapter, you could also see several uh, uh, references that can be used to study about ASEAN. Okay, so uh, okay, so we ran out of time, I think. Mm, yes, so it's four o'clock or or the uh, or ten o'clock in Jakarta. And so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Evie, for your 
uh, wonderful uh, uh, lecture and uh, and i hope to see you soon in torino maybe maybe next year if possible okay thank you very much also for inviting me i'm very pleased to join the, your discussion and i hope you find it useful and looking forward for further discussion okay so and thank you very much uh, you. to students for joining this uh, seminar okay so um thank you very much and thank you bye bye thank you bye thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.